Okay, we're going to talk about oxidation and reduction. So a good way to remember this is oil rig. So oxidation is losing electrons. And reduction is gaining electrons. gaining electrons. That should help you remember uh, which one is losing electrons and which one is gaining electrons. If we were talking about this in the biological definition, you'd probably say it was losing hydrogens and reduction would be gaining hydrogens. But it's, it's easier to remember this in terms of electrons, especially when we start talking about oxidative states. So I like to use electrons as opposed to hydrogens. When I'm dealing with oxidation and reduction, it's just a lot easier to think about. So let's go down through and just give some basic examples. So let's start here. Let's say we have a carbon and it's bonded with a hydrogen. So in this case, carbon is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen, so therefore it's going to hog the electrons. So carbon will hog the electrons from hydrogen. So carbon is going to be reduced and hydrogen is going to be oxidized. So let's use another example. So we have carbon here bonded with oxygen and oxygen is a lot more electronegative and carbon, so therefore oxygen is going to be reduced and carbon is going to be oxidized. So oxygen is hogging the electrons from carbon. So hopefully that gives you a, a basic understanding. Let's talk about electronegativity real quick so that this will, will make sense. Let's scroll up here and look at the periodic table. So when we're dealing with electronegativity, as you go up the periodic table from left, from the bottom left to the upper right, electronegativity increases. So electronegativity increases. So as we go from left to right, electronegativity is going to increase. So that should make sense because here's hydrogen right here. And here's the carbon. So this is our first example. So carbon is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. So that's the reason down here I said carbon is hogging the electrons from hydrogen. So therefore carbon is being reduced because we know reduction is gaining. And hydrogen is being oxidized because oxidation is losing. So hydrogen is losing those electrons. Now let's look at our second example. 
Here we use carbon and oxygen. So right here's oxygen on the periodic table. So oxygen is a lot more electronegative than carbon. So if those two are combined or bonded together, then oxygen is going to be reduced. It's going to be gaining carbon's electrons. And carbon is going to be oxidized. So there's probably one of the best examples of oxidation and reduction I can give you the simplest form. So let's get a little bit more complicated. I don't want to get too complicated. I just want you to understand the basic principle. So when you're dealing with cellular respiration and we start talking about NAD pluses being reduced to NADH, that you know that you're gaining electrons there or you're gaining hydrogens when you're being reduced. So that, as long as you can understand that, that's all we really need. So let's talk about a good example that I've seen on the web before. I like to use this to describe oxidation and reduction. So this is what happen, happened in the Hindenburg. And you had oxygen and hydrogen combined. You had this super reaction, a really explosive reaction, where you're going to have some H2O as a result and a lot of heat being produced, a lot of heat. So now let's talk about this in terms of oxidation and reduction and oxidative states so that if, if you ever hear something have an oxidative state you'll kind of understand. So we've got our H2O right here. So there's our hydrogens. So oxygen, if we remember back to the periodic table, let me scroll up here. So oxygen is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen scroll back down here real quick so oxygen is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen therefore it's gonna hog its hydrogens electrons and it's gonna get one electron from each one of these hydrogens and try to find a place to put this so that gives hydrogen a plus one oxidative state and I'll explain that in just a second and that gives oxygen a negative two oxidative state. Now this should make sense because we talked about electronegativity and since electrons are negative, have a negative charge, if oxygen gains some electrons it's going to become even more negative so that's why we see that negative two oxidative state and down here we see a plus one for each one of these hydrogens because they're each losing an electron since you've lost an electron and it is um, a lot more negative or it is negative it's going to actually increase their oxidative state so they're, they're increasing by one they're becoming a little bit more positive I guess that would be the best example so I hope that kind of clears it clarifies oxidative states let's let's talk about a neutral oxidative state real quick so up here we have a hydrogen bonded with a hydrogen so I'm referring to this right here so each one of these would have a negative oxidative state because we're equally sharing the hydrogens they're in a happy state right here so neither one of them is is hogging electrons from the other one so that is oxidation and reduction in a nutshell. Let's go over it really quick before we end this video. So electronegativity increases from the lower left to the upper right of the periodic table. So you see atoms over here are a lot more electronegative. So atoms over here are a lot more electronegative than atoms over here. So that's the reason you almost always see hydrogen losing its electrons because it is not even close to these atoms over here when it comes to electronegativity. So oxidation, so just remember oil rig, that'll help you remember 
oxidation is losing electrons or your you know, biological sense you're losing hydrogens and reduction the rig portion of it reduction is gaining electrons or you're gaining hydrogens so that's again when I, when I refer to the hydrogens I'm talking about the biological point of view there because normally in biology um, you're always giving up um, hydrogens or gaining hydrogens so but I like to think of it as you are losing electrons with oxidation and you're gaining elect electrons with reduction and here's some simple examples that we went over hopefully those will help you remember it and apply what you've learned here's a little bit more complex example and we're dealing with oxidative states here so I hope this helps you understand that so that when you watch future videos or even past videos now you can understand uh, oxidation and reduction and have a, a fairly good handle on it. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.